moment is here, you can stop your search, it's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, just returning from an enjoyable, uh, and it was enjoyable, actually, a trip to, in this case, it's the Pony Express, Pony Mailbox, sorry, and it's a UPS shop um, that uh, we mailed everything for Jim and I Jump out of, all the comics. Now, what's interesting about this place is uh, I've used them in the past, and uh, what, they're a tiny little operation, but... And this is going to sound super stereotypical and everything, but the, the owner of it and the workers are all German. And I don't know if it's like a family business, uh, but I think it might be. The, uh, the whole outfit, uh, I think, is, is either German or, or from Austria. And um, they are, <laughs> I'll, I drop the stuff off and like the guy's yelling at me as I'm coming into place like, don't hold it that way. If you hold it that way and you drop it, it's going to bend it. You want to screw up your package? Stop doing it. So you, I'm not trying to fake a, a German accent here, but the guy's like shouting at me <laughs> in this German accent. But it gave me a lot of, it, it's always, for, for many years, it's given me a lot of confidence, even though it's a small shop, that the people are going to treat the stuff uh, relatively well. And and I think, and I also just enjoy the comedy of it uh, because, uh, you know, the guy's like, we'll treat your package well. But uh, Americans, they, 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 the postal service, they, they're going to, they're going to treat this like garbage when it gets out of our store. We don't control that. But if I could, I would. <laughs> like, I just, I love the sinister overtones there. Like, this guy is, like, stupid. His his one-man war against uh, the Postal Service. I, I don't know why. Dead, dead charms. Anyway, all those boxes are off. That's, uh, that's all very good. So, uh, really uh, love getting the comic out within a week. And, uh, you know, people getting their book fast and, and that's great. I just, uh, that's, that's what people deserve. So we'll do this again in January, I think with some more, um, and we're just going to keep doing it more and more, more comics. That's the, that's the plan as many comics as, as we can, as we can put out. So, um, you know, all, all quick timing. Um, some people have asked, you know, Hey, uh, what, uh, why, you know, you got the comic printed ahead of time that takes a risk. And, uh, and you're right. It absolutely is a risk. That's uh, that a hundred percent. It's a risk. It's, it's business. I think part of using some, the, the funds, frankly, that come off of YouTube, I've told this story before was that, uh, you know, it's, I I'm putting projects in play that are, are paid out ahead of time. Not everybody can do this, and this is okay. Um, crowdfunding shouldn't just be this way. Crowdfunding absolutely can be you raise the funds and then you get the book printed, and that's fine too. But if you have the means to do it, um, then I think that's a good option as well. I don't think there's any one way to do this. Um, I understand uh, I got... <laughs> there's I, I've, I've pissed off some people, I guess. I, 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 it's the only way to put it. Um, and I, I, you don't need to be pissed off. Do your book. Do, do your book the best you can. Get the stuff out. Communicate. It. Uh, it. This. This isn't. This isn't the war of the the crowdfunding. It's just, you know, do what you're you're able to do. If you have um, if you have abilities, if you have the ability to do your book in a different way, take it. You know. But absolutely, this could have been a risk. We could have um, got these books printed and then like no retail deal comes through no uh backers and i'm i'm sitting there i'm like well i'm out a thousand bucks it was worth it it was worth the risk uh because you know we tried to put as many things in place i tried to put as many things in place in terms of distribution to basically lower that risk to make it so that it was as safe as bet as possible and it was this this book is uh is quite profitable good for good for larry good for everybody so that's all that's that's all really that comes down to uh, but that's not what I, I, what I came in and you probably, uh, so now you've listened to all this nonsense and you probably came in with the, uh, cowboy bebop, um, you know, uh, image and thumbnail. So I got my hands on the, uh, on early release of, uh, of cowboy bebop. And I've asked twice if it's under embargo and was told no, but I have to believe it is. So I'll do a very, uh, loose review here of, of the Netflix show. And this is the live action copy of, uh, of cowboy bebop. Now, Full disclosure, and this always horrifies people when I say this, but uh, I am not the biggest uh, Cowboy Bebop fan I, in terms of the original anime, the the manga. I, I It didn't catch me. I don't know why. It should have, by the things I normally like and, and appreciate, it should have been something that uh, that I like. 
but it, it didn't it didn't work for me. I don't I can't explain it other than that. Sometimes you like sometimes uh, something is a good product. I, I recognize Cowboy Bebop's a good product. I'm not going to insult it. It is not uh, it is not the Arby's of manga. It is it is a very solid, you know, good product. Um, but it just it wasn't something I was interested in. Interestingly enough, uh, or maybe not. I, I don't know if you you know this series. Hopefully you do. Um, Trigun. Uh, Trigon is a, is, I'm much more fond of that. I love that series. And I thought that was, that was great stuff. And I, I always liked, like that one far better than uh, Cowboy Bebop. Not that they were the same because they, they weren't, but a lot of people would group those two together anyway. So Netflix, uh, has this live action version and, um, it, it sparked a lot of controversy. Or, you know, a lot of people didn't, did, you know, were, were a no, uh, for it. Um, they, they did not want it. Uh, did not like uh, did not like any aspect of it, and I think that um, that's fine. Uh, that's fine and fair. Um, but it is uh, it, it. so so. And I'm I'm trying to pick my words carefully a little bit about it. Um, I don't think that uh, that in general um, live action manga adaptations are a good idea. I think they should be avoided. If you are, uh, you know, if, if you're thinking of converting your, you know, your manga, if, I, I just, I think it works. It works as manga. It works as anime. I don't think it needs to be anything uh, bigger than that. I don't think it, it should be anything bigger than that. I think that the anime is good as it is. I think one of the issues, and I may be speaking a little bit more historically here, is in the U.S. there's almost this insecurity complex around animation. If it's animated, it can't be as good. If it's animated, it's not a it's not a real product. It's not a solid product. I think that's that's absurd. I think Pixar uh, helped change people's minds about that. But there is this this almost insecurity complex that comes up around um, around this stuff. Around you know basic uh, it, it 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 just it's it's silly. It's it's silly that it works that way. There's this desire of it's not real until it's live action. And but a lot of these concepts in comic books and in manga and other things they don't they don't work well in live action. You don't have the budget for it, and you have to change you know you have to change a lot of the concepts. I if if you're asking me, would I like to see you know Jack Kirby stuff adapted to you know live action or a really high? I mean, can you imagine if you took the money and the funds of Pixar and you made a you know panel for panel recreation in some cases of some of Jack Kirby's cosmic stuff that would kill. And I, I would, I don't want to see that in live action. I want to see that Kirby crackle in, in an animated form. I think that's, that's what, how it, that that's great. Now, if you want to take a shot at it, you know, be my guest, but, but why, why, why would you, you know, why, why bother with that kind of stuff? I I just, I think animation is perfectly good as it is. The Cowboy Bebop Netflix show suffered uh, or suffers, I think, from trying to adapt something that it doesn't need to be adapted or shouldn't be adapted um, in into live action. I think it, it a lot of those concepts work um, just fine in animation and suck when you try and you know when you when you try and and bring them to life. And I think Cowboy Bebop uh, absolutely falls into that you know that trap. I, I think it's it it doesn't it doesn't work right. It doesn't look right. And also, Cowboy Bebop is, uh, it's quirky, is probably the best way to put it, in terms of the style and the way that uh, the characters are represented and everything else. And so, when they, when they make the conversion, it, it kind of attempted to um, mimic that, that quirkiness, um, where it's trying to, to mimic the source material, um, but it, it doesn't, it, it it, it feels like it's it knows it's clever, or it, it wants you to believe it's very very clever, and that it, it, it just it just doesn't work. Um, it's it's wacky, um, but it's it's really I don't know. It, it, again, I, I once you see the show, and uh, once you once you kind of sense the smugness in the show, it's hard to turn off. So the best thing to do if you're if you're interested in watching this is kind of turn off your brain a little bit and don't um, you know be careful about reading into what they're doing 
it's uh it's it's just it's just not charming i guess i i don't know um it's like somebody watched a few episodes of the show got really excited about the stylistic aspects of it and said i'll recreate that in live action and it uh it just doesn't it doesn't fit um a lot has been said about the clothes um, about Faye's, uh, Faye Valentine's outfit and how it's uh, more conservative than the anime. And honestly, that's, that's, you don't worry about that. That's the, when you watch the show, that is not what you're thinking. You're not thinking what happened to her clothes. It, it's, I understand it's a controversy. I also understand that, uh, the actress, uh, came on and gave a very snarky kind of response to, uh, to the clothing and, and to the whole controversy and, and it just kind of, but in many ways, the actress, uh, Daniela uh, Panetta, um, her response, that kind of snarky, uh, overly smart, if that's the right way to put it, smart in quotes, response to this clothing controversy, is the problem with the show. It's not the clothes. It's that the show really wants you to understand that it's quirky and it's clever and it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it, that it's, it's doing more then, uh, it, you know, it's, it's working really hard and you should appreciate that. Except what you really want is just good entertainment. That's kind of the, the problem. Um, it, they made a bunch of, uh, much is going to be said about some changes to some of the backstories. Uh, there, you know, uh, Julia, uh, has a lot more here than, than in, in the anime. Um, but it's, um, again, I, you don't, it, I would prefer they modify the source material and give backstories and do more if it drove the story forward, if it helped in this in the live action representation of it. The the thing that really catches you and and, and brings it down is uh, is that it's it it, it feels like I, I guess the best way to put it is it feels like somebody taking the cartoon and saying um, let's. Uh, Let's let's be let's let's make a really smart, almost Quentin Tarantino like live action parody of a cartoon, and it it comes off strange. Honestly, th- this is the worst. Side. The thing I kept thinking is like this is what a porno director would do if they were trying to make a parody of a movie as a porno, and they were trying to insert, especially with the jokes. The jokes are terrible, by the way. Um, it is it is cringy. I, I don't I don't usually use that word, but oh my god, it's. Uh, the, the joke just the jokes just are, are absolutely terrible um, that's that's the only way to say it it's um it, it's just it really again it really wants you to believe that it's super super smart and um, it's it it knows what's doing and everything feels very very smug um, I, I have a feeling that a lot of the reviews are going to talk about woke aspects or SJW aspects or all that kind of stuff. And it, it will gloss over the core problem. The core problem is that the com the, the, the show, the Netflix show just feels far too, if you, it, it feels like hey, I'm, I'm just sounding like a broken record. It wants you to believe it's really smart and it keeps putting that in your face and it keeps kind of showcasing how, uh, how clever it is that what it's done. Um, and you know, parts of it look pretty, it's shot very nicely in many cases. I think that's almost a shame because several of the, of the sets and the, the movement and the show is, uh, it is beautiful to look at. Um, but then it's interspiced, uh, interspliced with like really terrible humor or, uh, zip cuts or other things that almost diminish the cool atmosphere that it's, it's put up. It's, uh, it's again, the, 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 it, it, it's outlandish because it wants you to know it's outlandish. It's, uh, it's got, you know, no holds barred kind of storytelling and style because it's important. You recognize it's got that style. It, it just, it feels like it's, um, it just wants it, 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 it is, it is trying to prove to you how amazing it is and in, in doing so f- absolutely fails at being amazing. I hope that's, that's probably as, as good as a review I can do with, uh, staying within the bounds of, of the embargo. But, uh, it's, um, if you're a fan of the anime, just watch the anime. And that's probably the same advice I would give for everything. 
just just watch the anime, read the manga. You know, you like that style. I, I even though Oda's involved with One Piece, I am I'm just uh, cringing at what that show is going to be. I don't. I, it, the the anime is is so good. It's just so good as it is. Seeing these things adapted uh, is uh, uh, put it this way: it needs to be done with heart, as opposed with snark. And this show was like, hey, you know what's really cool? Quentin Tarantino. And you know what else is cool is like that, you know, the way James Gunn has characters quipping at each other in Guardians of the Galaxy. And then if you look at Cowboy Bebop and how it's kind of quirky and stylistic, why don't we take those three things and all cram them together and, and make a show with it? And then we'll remind everybody about how uh, amazing we are for doing this. That's that's the problem with the show. It you never get to suspend your disbelief and just enjoy the show for what it is because you're too busy being reminded of this stuff. So you may still like it. Um, it's worth checking out an episode or two. If you do, just as much as you can, turn your brain off. Just keep turning your brain off and just enjoy the show for what it is. The second you start to, uh, it's like a, a little magic trick. If you start to really think about how the magician is doing the trick, you're going to ruin the act. So, as much as you could delay that, the better. Um, the, the second you start, second you start wondering about how the magic's done, it, poof, it's over. That's kind of what what I think of the show. Anyway, let me know what you think if you watch it, and thanks for listening.